What is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so here's the situation we have for you, ladies and gentlemen. This is Tropical Storm Lee, now a 70-mile-per-hour tropical storm. It is nearing hurricane strength. So, yeah, things are getting pretty real. About tw 24 hours ago at this time, this was a tropical depression with winds of 35 miles per hour, and now is winds of 70. So this has met the, uh, the, the clarification and definition of rapid intensification, ladies and gentlemen. So... Lee, we can say confidently here on the Pat's Path Predictor channel, is rapidly intensifying. But what we also can say confidently is that this thing is now moving west-northwest, thankfully. Here's the latest from the NHC right here. Current location, 14.1 degrees north, 45.5 degrees west. Its maximum sustained winds, once again, are 70 miles per hour, moving at west-northwest or 285 degrees at 14 miles per hour. So it has slowed down a little bit. Pressure's down to 994 millibars, expecting that to continue decreasing at a pretty rapid pace. Tropical storm force winds are now extending out 80 miles from the center. And if we go ahead and show you the cone right here, look at how organized this looks right here. Look at how circular and organized that uh, Lee looks according to the according to the cone based on tropical storm force winds. And satellite imagery definitely does back this up too. So that's a pretty interesting situation right here. We're going to go ahead and show you the visible uh, a visible satellite on this as well, just to give you a better understanding of what's going on. So here's what we got. Okay, we're going to go ahead and slow down, that down. I apologize for that. But yeah, we do have some good news we need to talk about. This thing last night started deviating away from its westward track to more of a west-northwestward track, around 280 to 290 degrees. That is good news because... Because before, this thing moved west by, for, by about like 500 miles, and I was worried that if it continued moving at the rate that it was, then things, uh, things were going to look a little bit more interesting and a little bit more alarming for the Lesser Antilles. However, based on this west-northwestward west track, it does appear that the odds of, an, of a direct impact are decreasing, which is very good news. So we'll have to continue to monitor it for now as time continues to go on. The cone continues to have this thing moving west-northwest, and it has it moving north of the Lesser Antilles for now. I could definitely see a scenario where uh, where this thing could definitely get within like th 20 to 30 miles of the northern Leeward Islands over here. And depending on how that track plays out and depending on the high-pressure systems that are in place, we'll have to wait and see what this does ahead of time. However... A couple of models recently piqued my interest, actually, and I'm going to go ahead and pull those up real quick, uh, real quickly, at least from what Weather Center Nazario sent me. And things are about to get pretty interesting from what I uh, from what I have seen. So let me go ahead and pull. Uh, let me go ahead and pull that up for you. So here we go. Uh, ah, yes, here the here it is. So here's this. Uh, here's what Net Weather Center Nazario posted earlier today. The UK and Korean models are pushing further west, bringing a uh, t trying to bring about a Bahama Islands impact and maybe a Carolina coast going forward. Such a, a, a margin of tr uh, such a uh, yeah, still so much of a tr uh, margin of error in track. So that's what's pretty interesting, and that's what's piquing my interest right here because. Let's say this thing misses the Lesser Antilles, but then heads for the Bahamas, similar to what Dorian did. Which, if that was the case, that would be pretty interesting to see. Now we're seeing models continuing to push this further to the west, which we'll have to wait and see because that's about seven days out by that point. However, based off of uh, what I'm uh, based off of what I'm seeing with the new uh, model runs, especially with the operational ones, it's definitely a more probable scenario, at least synoptically. We'll get to that in just a second, but we need to go ahead and talk about the discussion real quickly because they're st they are now forecasting this to strengthen up to a 150 mile per hour hurricane. This is the first time that they uh, that this was when on the first advisory that I have seen they issue a. Um, Category 4 intensity forecast for such a weak storm right there. And that's pretty interesting and that's pretty alarming because based off of what we're about to see, this thing is about to explosively intensify. It's already rapidly intensifying, but based off the organization it's doing and all the warm water and weak wind shear and insane ocean heat content that's that's going around, yeah, this I'm concerned that this thing could absolutely take off, and we have a bunch of models, hurricane models, to show you how low this could go. But before we get into those, we're going to go ahead and show you some operational models. Here's the European operational. As of right now, this thing is starting to organize, develops. It's a little bit 
bit behind from int intensity wise, but the system continues to move north. It kind of takes a westward jog by a, a little bit, and then it approaches uh, the Lesser Antilles. It appears, according to the European, it is a moving a little closer to the Antilles than the previous run, which is pretty interesting to say at the very least. So I'm still confident enough to say the Lesser Antilles are going to get some sort of impact from this. However, the European operational then continues to move this west, continues to get this down to a 933, 921 millibar system before the t uh, before it starts to stall out and starts turning a little bit more to the north. It gets, guess what? We're down to 918 at one point, 174 hours out, which is about seven days and change, which is pretty scary looking at that because that's a Category 5 hurricane the European has continued to call for. Now, we're going to go ahead and next uh, pull up the 500 millibar height anomalies. There is a pretty there is a trough right here that was in previous runs. That is forecast to weaken considerably. However, there is a bit of a trough in the Midwestern United States that could synoptically at least pull, uh, continue to keep this out to sea. However, based from previous runs, this, this trough has weakened quite a bit. We're going to go ahead and show you the 12Z. 12Z, a much larger, and much more broad trough that was coming uh, down into the continental United States potentially pushing this out to sea where are we at at zero z boom much weaker here if this is a bit of a shift but if this turns into a trend or that trough weakens at a consistent rate and keep in mind we're still nine days out this thing could potentially impact the u.s and potentially start with the carolinas and basically favor what that may favor the U the uk met and the a Korean models forecast of it hitting the Bahamas. So that's pretty interesting. The models are so split at this point, but I'm still keeping an eye on it. Here, we're going to go ahead and next show you the GFS. GFS organizing, developing, having it moving a bit north than, uh, than the European. Gets down to about 930s millibar system, category 4 hurricane. Starts to make that turn. And the GFS is having this call, is calling for this to hit Nova Scotia as either a weakening tropical cyclone or an extra tropical cyclone. Which, for those in Nova Scotia, Newfoundland, you're going to need to watch out down the road. But for the next five days, it's expected to rapidly intensify in the Atlantic. Antilles, Puerto Rico are definitely going to see at least some sort of impact. I'm not 100% sure which, considering how much further south the track went. But we'll have to continue to monitor it for sure as time continues to go on. We're next going to go ahead and show you the CMC. Pull up the zero z cmc has this thing organizing and developing moving a bit more a bit more north like the gfs according to this and it's a lot more combat compact of a storm gets down to a category two hurricane according to the latest from the cmc um, nhc is already going at category four strength so this is a more conservative model then it makes that northward turn it's expecting that huge trough to be up there and kind of t steer this more to the north which We'll have to wait and see when it gets there because the trough and the ridge are extremely unpredictable in all of these models. Next one we're sh showing you is the nav gem. Excuse me for that. Navgem has, has this organizing, developing, moving a little bit north of the Lesser Antilles, however, still expecting to get some impacts from that. Gets down to a 940s millibar system, starts to make a bit of a turn. There is a bit of a trough here. We're going to try and pull up the 500 millibar on height anomalies. Yeah, this trough uh, right here is expected to be pretty large, according to the Navgem, and keep this mainly out to sea, if not to, the New, if not to England, New England and Nova Scotia, Newfoundland over here. Something to pay attention to for sure. This uh, trough has been extremely unpredictable over the last couple of days, so we'll have to keep an eye on it. Next one is the Icon, 0Z Icon. Similar to the Nav Gem, organizing, developing, moves uh, through. Gets down to a 930s millibar system. There is a bit of a trough here, so we'll have to keep an eye on that for sure. But that's pretty much what we have for the models. We're going to go ahead and show you the global sea temperatures and the ocean heat content that this thing is moving through. Global sea temperatures, 29 plus degrees Celsius through pretty much now all the way until it gets to the Atlantic Basin. So I'm pr that's something to continue to monitor as time continues to go on. OHC, where it is now, it's about to, it's either about to or just entering an area of 100 to 125 ocean heat content. So basically, right now, we're, it's rapidly intensifying at 70 miles per, uh, 70 miles per hour. And we're not even in the best, best conditions yet. So that is raising a lot of alarm bells to uh, see what's going on with this. We're looking at a potential Category 5 hurricane, according to some models. And here's the wind shear right here. There is a bit of wind shear to the northwest of this system. However, I don't think it's going to impact the development or strengthening of it that much. It hasn't over the course of the last uh, 24 hours, so I wouldn't uh, pay too much attention to that. But the shear from now until it gets to the Bahamas is really good. 
It's really good. It's the best conditions of the season for this thing to organize and develop. So that's why I am so worried and I am so concerned about this. And I don't and because the models are so uncertain about where this is going and who's going to get impacted and who's not going to get impacted, just it's very hard to tell what this thing's going to do, especially when this thing explosively intensifies. Now we're going to go ahead and show you some hurricane model runs. We're going to go ahead and show you the HAFS runs, the HMON, and the HWARF as well. The HAFS runs, we're going to go ahead and go with the 6, uh, 6Z since the 12Z is not entirely out. Here are the 6Z runs. This thing organizes, develops, starts strengthening, rapidly intensifies in the next 48 hours, right? Down to a 958 millibar system according to what the HMON is going for. And then this thing continues to grow and expand in size and strengthen as well. Gets down to a 920s millibar system. Gets down to a it gets up to a category five hurricane based on main sea level pressure winds, according to the HMON. Undergoes likely an eyeball replacement cycle and then starts to strengthen again as a larger system, high end category four, low end category five, according to the HMON. So that's the HMON. Next one we're showing you is the HAFSA. Right here, we're going to pull up the 6Z, 6Z as well. Organizes, develops, starts rapid, continues to rapidly intensify. It's, it's The HAFS A is already uh, behind schedule. This is at, supposed to be at 995 millibars at 33 hours out. We're already down to 994 based off of what the NHC is going off of. So definitely something to pay attention to. But this thing continues to organize and rapidly intensify nevertheless. Gets down to a 920s millibar system, potentially a 175 mile per hour hurricane based off of the max wind data according to the halves a at the main sea level pressure and fluctuates around category five maybe high end category four strength gets down to 919 millibars as well which is absolutely shocking and absolutely scary now we're going to go ahead and show you the hafsb run and a lot of the uh, the hafsb has been very 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 aggressive so far this th thing is rapidly intensifying continues to organize as we speak gets down to a 950s millibar system 940s in the next 72 hours gets down to 920s 910s 908 millibars in 93 hours max winds are 170 175 to 180 miles per hour in that storm that's why I'm taking this so seriously, because we're having models calling for Category 5 hurricanes, and not just Cat 5s, but strong Cat 5s. Gets down to 902, 901 millibars at the 6C run. That is the strongest, that's the lowest pressure I've seen since, I think, Maria in 2017. And that's why I'm taking it so seriously, because even if this doesn't impact much land, it's still going to be a very incredible storm, nevertheless. And anyone that's in this thing's path, yeah, it's not going to end well for them. And that's why I'm going to continue to update you here on the Pat's Path Predictor channel. We're going to close the video out right here. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you are new. It helps us out, helps us make more videos like these. The goal of this channel is to get more people engaged with weather. But with that being said... Have a wonderful day, guys. Stay safe.